How will Ukraine react? And what more does the country need from Canada to fight this war? Alexander Daniluk is Ukraine's former national security chief. He's now involved in intelligence operations countering Russia's war on Ukraine. Hi, Mr. Daniluk. Thank you very much for making the time. Uh, thank you for having me. I want to start off on these awful images that the world has uh, uh, been been watching and been uh, bearing witness to over the past few days. Uh, we hear our foreign minister saying that uh, it's important for, for example, Russian diplomats in this country to look at those uh, when they are summoned. What is your perspective on those images? Do, do, for example, does Ukraine know which Russian forces are responsible? How do you anticipate Ukraine will respond? Uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, it's not uh, some sort of uh, exclusion from uh, Russian uh, forces' uh, usual behavior in Ukraine. And unfortunately, we will have more and more uh, that sort of uh, uh, evidence uh, of uh, uh, Russian uh, war crimes uh, when we will uh, liberate other territories. So right now uh, we have our sources on the occupied territories of, uh, for instance, Kherson uh, region and Zaporizhia region. And unfortunately, it's more or less the same everywhere. And uh, uh, from this point of view, uh, we have to be ready to uh, that uh, terrible news from other regions as well. Uh, uh, what I know right now for sure, that we have some of that uh, uh, examples in uh, already uh, liberated areas of Chernihiv and Sumy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and again, so unfortunately, this is not unusual behavior of Russian army because it's exactly what they did in uh, Chechnya during the first and uh, especially second Chechen war. It's exactly what they did in Syria and what they helped uh, Assad to, to do in Syria. Uh, and this is the reality. This is the face of our enemy. And, and what is your assessment then of, of where the war is at right now? Because as you've pointed out, as many have pointed out, Ukraine has provided or has has uh, has had a much stronger resistance than maybe originally anticipated. The resistance is strong, but clearly Russia is uh, making gains in other areas. H how would you describe, like, how would you assess where things are at right now? So the original plan uh, Russia had was to occupy a significant part of the country, including uh, the capital of Ukraine, uh, Kiev, uh, uh, and uh, According to our uh, assessments, before the war, it was not possible. And that's why we never believed that Russia uh, would dare to attack Ukraine. And we were right. But we were wrong about Russian uh, calculation, right? So Russians uh, miscalculated uh, Ukrainian capabilities, uh, capabilities of Ukrainian armed forces, and capabilities of Ukrainian society. Uh, and that's why they... Uh, made that suicide attack everywhere. But now they uh, got that uh, lesson uh, from Ukrainian armed forces and uh, Ukrainian people. And they uh, decided to concentrate all of the uh, military efforts on south and east of Ukraine mm -hmm. to gain at least some uh, victories uh, in the nearest future. And... Uh, our task, of course, is to uh, make uh, uh, as much damage to Russian troops as possible, because unfortunately, we don't have any other uh, channels uh, to communicate with Russian population, but uh, uh, through that uh, casualties. Uh, so, uh, as, as you know, Russians, Russian government banned uh, almost all of the independent mm -hmm. channels of communication, including social media, uh, like Facebook and uh, Instagram and YouTube in the beginning of the conflict. So right now, the single message we can deliver to Russian population, a uh, message about... Uh, 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 very simple message that the war against Ukraine is not such a good idea and this uh, war will be the bloodiest war they ever had in their history. Uh, 
Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I was just is... going to say, as you mentioned, though, it's difficult to get that message across given the, uh, the, the lack of independent media. There is no independent media yeah, yeah, in yeah, Russia. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so yeah. In, in light of that, uh, Ukraine clearly needs help also its military, right? And, and every politician who's been on our show from Ukraine has made the point, we need lethal aid, we need more help with weapons. If you were to describe for our viewers exactly what that help looks like, what help do they need at this moment in time, what would you say? It's very simple. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, to resist properly to uh, Russian uh, aggression, and again, we have to understand that Russia is not going to reduce it. They're going only to increase it. And they actually right now mobilized additional uh, 60,000 troops to be sent to Ukraine. So we need like probably about uh, 30 additional brigades and we need to provide them with uh, all of the equipment. And uh, actually, yeah, it's uh, hundreds of tanks. It's uh, probably uh, about maybe a couple of thousands of armored vehicles. It's artillery. It's everything. Because we need to build that brigades from the scratch just to stop Russians uh, from attacking us. Is the flow of that aid, is the flow of those weapons what it was, let's say, a month ago? Or do you sense that there has been a slowdown in the delivery of that aid? Yeah, uh, okay. I, I want uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Westerners to understand that we have uh, a war with one of the biggest uh, armies in the world history. And with all our respect uh, and gratitude to all of the aid you sent to Ukraine, it's not even, uh, 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 it's never been even 10% of our, you know, potential needs. The scale of the war is like, literally, it's, it's like Second World War scale of conflict. And we have uh, uh, the army, which uh, is so scary that actually NATO is not going to send any troops to support Ukraine on the ground. So from this point of view, I think that it's completely clear that we need uh, uh, like completely different. We need like, you know, World War uh, type of land lease from the West. This is what we need, right? We need, you know, hundreds of planes. We, we need, you know, missile systems. If it's not about, uh, if you want to help us to survive, because after Bucha and after uh, Hostomel and after all of that Irpin, you know, villages, you, 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 you understand that Russian goal is to destroy our nation. And they already killed 6 million Ukrainians by uh, uh, USSR, you know, and KVD in uh, just 1937 and, and 1933. So I mean that they already conducted that genocide against, you know, our grand grandparents. So it is real and it's going on in Ukraine right now. And what does it say to you uh, that the West has failed to deliver enough aid to help, that it's only a fraction of what Ukraine needs? Yeah, I think that what you need to do, you need to bring your generals, strategic generals, commanders of your uh, armed forces, and to ask them what would they need to win this war. It's very simple. And they would uh, answer you that, uh, you know, it's not possible to win this sort of war with tactical weapon. And again, even uh, regarding that tactical weapon, like, uh, you know, anti-tank systems and anti-aircraft uh, man pads, uh, it's it's a matter of quantity of them. We never had enough, you know, uh, anti-tank uh, systems even to send them everywhere. That's why we uh, we have the problems in the south of Ukraine because in Kherson we had no systems at all. In uh, Mariupol we had just ten of them and they didn't work. You know, I mean that uh, it, it's not enough to have you know that professional and brave soldiers. They need weapons. Thank you, Mr. Daniluk. I appreciate you making the time.